Good morning everybody. Well I've come a different way today. It was chucking it down with rain last night and uh, decided to go on a slightly different walk. I'm just going to go down to the end of this field here. I hope everybody's doing all right and everybody's safe. So let's just begin and just, I said last week that we would review the church situation week by week. Yes, we are staying closed. Hospitals are full. The ambulances are queuing outside of hospitals at the moment. Patients are, some of them are having to wait four hours before the, in the ambulance before they can even get in hospital. It's just not wise. The COVID levels around Stoke and around where we are here are sky high at the moment. And although the vast majority of people that get COVID, it's, you know, deal with it very, very well. There are those that get it and you don't know until you've got it. There are those that get it and it's incredibly nasty. Um, somebody said to me this week that's struggling like mad with it at the moment. She wouldn't wish it on her worst enemy. Another lady in church that's had it for uh, three weeks ago said it's horrendous. I'm not saying these things to scare you in any way. It's just that we've got, we've got to be wise. We've got to look after people, particularly the older ones. And not just the older ones. We also have to think about our families. So we've got to do our part when we can. And at the moment, the wise thing to do is to leave the church short until these figures start to drop down again and hospitals start to free up again. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for uh, just being so understanding over this last year. We've got to keep on showing grace, friends, with one another. Anyway, let's get to the point here. Viv and Ray are very ill and they need our prayer. Um, Viv is very short of breath. She's oxygen levels have gone down. And there's just no other way of putting it, but that she's in a battle as well, in her mind, there's, you can feel it. And and fear comes like waves as well. You, you know, one minute you're up, the next minute, whew. And this is, the, 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 you're also in, a, in a, a situation like COVID where family can't come in and everything. And I am gonna go in and see her, by the way. Uh, we're gonna wait for an, a couple of days if she goes down more. I'm going to go and see her in hospital but just to let you know if you do nothing else on zoom apart from pray for Viv and Ray that is the most important thing because it would not be an exaggeration to say that they're fighting for their lives okay so that's the first thing okay friends before we go any further this is something that I planned on doing at the start of the year I want to talk about the polarization and division that we're going to see happening more and more throughout this year. Now remember the words of Jesus, a house that is divided cannot stand. Do you remember all the way back when this nation voted to come out of Europe and the, the toxicity on social media when that happened? Not just by the way with uh, normal people, but even Christians were getting incredibly passionate and emotional over it and there was a there was a you could see something happening at that time that was very worrying well you need to understand that one of I'm sure you do understand that one of Satan's most effective uh, weapons is to divide that's what he does a house that is divided cannot stand and the one thing that we need to be uh, as we go into this year and these times we need to be united in Christ so we had we had that then covid broke out and we had all kinds of division over what covid is and uh, unbelievable amounts of, of opinions on what covid is i tried my best to stick to what the word of god says that covid is and um, it, it's not easy it's it's not easy but then we had that then we had division over masks do you remember and you've got this polarization happening all the time and it's, I'm, it's no secret to, to, to say that the principalities and powers, whether you want to call it Illuminati, Deep State, whatever, it doesn't matter. What they intend to do is bring total division, civil wars, mass riots. They want to bring confusion into this world at this time like never before. And I don't think we as Christians should be a part. 
So last year we saw terrible division over COVID, Brexit, masks, Black Lives Matter. Um, now we're seeing it with the vaccine, Donald Trump, what, what Donald Trump is. And we, the, we as Christians, spirit-filled Christians, have to be so wise that we're not drawn into things. And I think, uh, I genuinely think, we need to start to re-look re at Paul's letters. Uh, that's what I'm doing in my, for my own private study. I've just finished Romans. And understand that we are not to be drawn and entangled into these things. We're here for one reason, friends. We're here to glorify Christ, to proclaim the gospel and to uphold his word and not to get drawn into these things. Now, one of the things that's going to obviously bring division um, is the vaccine or vaccines, vaccines. And uh, for, for a whole number of reasons, people are jumping on this, you know, it, it's, it's tracking and tracing as it's got chips in. It's monitoring everything that we do. It, it is the mark of the beast. It's this, it's that, it's the other. Um, very interesting that we never bothered to um, create any kind of uh, protests over mobile phones which have got a chip in them, which track and which traces, which are monitoring us all the time. I went to Aldi last week and, and I came back from Aldi and it came up on my phone. How was Aldi? Like, how, what was your trip like to Aldi? Unbelievable. But here we are, we've reached something else that is uh, destined to cause another dollop of division. Now I want to state and stick to the word of God on this, but I do want to make this statement and, and it's simply this. Whatever people say about this vaccine, this vaccine is not the mark of the beast. And whatever people say about this vaccine or vaccines, we have had vaccines for all manner of diseases over the years. All manner of diseases. Have you ever seen pictures of people with smallpox? Just because this is something that you can't see, COVID-19, it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, now, whether a person takes or doesn't take this vaccine, I believe is a private matter. I was going through Romans, I've been praying about these things every day. And in Romans chapter 14, verse 22, I think it is, Paul's talking about foods and th things that you drink, food and various things. And, and he says, there are things that you keep between you and God. And my advice to you, um, when it comes to whether you take this vaccine or whether you don't take this vaccine is in Romans 14, 22, is keep it between you and God. Because this thing is, is designed to create problems. But let's talk about what it isn't. It is not the mark of the beast. And I say that because there are people that have been promoting this as the mark of the beast. That If you take this vaccine, somehow uh, there's no going back and it's the unforgivable sin and all this kind of absolute nonsense. These people, by the way, are the same people that believe every uh, um, concoction of, 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 of um, conspiratorial things for the last 30 years they've jumped on the bandwagon for all kinds of things now it's the vaccine is the mark of the beast no it's not so in revelation chapter 13 it tells us by that point when the mark of the beast is given there is a one world government there's a one world religion there's a new world order there's been a global reset none of those things have happened now i'm not saying we're not moving towards those things of course we are but let's not jump the gun and let's not be like the boy that cried wolf 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 when eventually the wolf actually comes people are like ah oh, no we've heard all this before what we need is people that are mature and wise and don't divide over things that we're not supposed to and only divide over things that we're called to divide over that is christ is gospel and the word of god so the mark of the beast comes at a time when there's a new world order, a one world government, a one world religion, when a, a, a power has risen, which is, the Bible refers to him as a beast, some kind of assassination attempt has happened on his life. People are terrified of him. Who can make war with this man? He has incredible power. 
However, I've just talked about a whole list of things that people are arguing about, and they are, even Christians are arguing about, Black Lives Matters, Brexit, vaccines, masks, Donald Trump, la -de da 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 The fact is in the last days there is going to be something that's going to polarise the world and it's Christ, the Gospel and His Word. That's what's going to polarise the world. So in Revelation 13, that's what you see is the polarising factor. It actually tells you in Revelation 13 that He makes war on the saints. At what time? At the time when, number one, He's created some kind of an image which the world is to worship. Now that's a direct violation of the first and second command. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not bow down to any idols. It is a parallel of Daniel 3 where Nebuchadnezzar uh, makes an image of gold and causes all people to worship it. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego rightly say we're not bowing down to that image. This is when you draw the line. This is when you draw the line and you'll know, you will know in your spirit this is when the line has to be drawn for all Christians because there's a polarization coming over Christ, his gospel and his word. This is the polarizing thing and that's why in Revelation 13 it says that he wakes, makes war on the saints because those people will not bow down to that image and neither will they take that mark because that mark is, is allegiance to Satan, it's practically selling your soul to the devil. I hope that makes sense friends, I hope it makes sense and I am not saying um, uh, in any way that people that don't take this vaccine are troublemakers or people that do take this vaccine are troublemakers. Romans 14 uh, 22 tells you that there are times when you keep your faith between you and God on a certain matter and I think that will be a wise thing to do concerning this vaccine. Now that brings me to the two, just two discussion points for Zoom, okay? Number one then, number one discussion point for Zoom. It's no coincidence that Saul was at one end of the spectrum and Paul was at the other end. Saul hated Jesus Christ and was a persecutor of Christians. Paul on the other hand loved Jesus Christ and loved all, all of the church. There was nobody that loved the church like Paul. There was nobody that prayed for the churches like Paul did. His life is at one end of each uh, uh, end of the spectrum. There was nobody that was more polarised in his life than Paul. You know, Saul over here, Paul over there. That is a type of what's coming in the last days. The polarization in the last days will be over Christ the gospel and his word. Okay, so the first thing is this. Can you find a scripture in Paul's writings that most shows the stark contrast between what he was and what he became? Find a scripture in the Bible that most shows the stark contrast between what he was and what he became. That's the first thing. The second thing is this. Find a scripture in Paul's writings that, that shows you and, and, you know, try to share why you think it's this one, that shows you the very glory and hope of the gospel. Pick a scripture from Paul's writings which most shows you the very glory and hope of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Hey, look at that sun there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in the midst of all this, friends, keep your eyes upon Jesus. You know what Jesus said? When you see these things begin to happen, look up. Look up. Look up, look up. People try to tell you to look this way and that way and all the craziness that's going on. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. God bless you.